Alone in the Dark sucks monkey balls. Yes, there I said it. The mother of horror survival games sucks monkey balls. The controls are atrocious, the story non-existent. The puzzles are stupid and the deaths are cheaper than your average OnlyFans model. Want a long version? Join me for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> For the smart people who never touch this game, let me give you a short summary. Alone in the Dark is a third-person survival horror game set in the early 1900s. You are sent to a mansion to investigate the suicide of some guy who lived there. Soon you find out that the mansion is haunted and you must now escape or face certain death. Sounds promising, right? Well, so did democracy. You start the game by choosing either a male or a female protagonist, and I have to admit, being in the early 90s, the voice acting is not too bad. It says, Private Detective. The few friends I have call me Carnby. Sure, it's nothing like the games of today, but back then, having any kind of voice acting was actually a big deal. After the backstory, you're giving a short cinematic of the main character walking through the house, and once again, I have to admit, this builds up the tension and atmosphere of the game. But then, you start to play the actual game. The controls. The controls are a nightmare. Just making your character run is a fucking feat of acrobatics. But the real problem starts when you see this. I swear to god, you're no more than 20 seconds into the game when this happens. It's supposed to be scary, but the only scary thing is the controls. Instead of just clicking to punch, you hold down the spacebar and arrow keys to kind of charge up your attack. It takes forever to charge up, and if your timing is none other than perfect, this is what you get. You might think I'm being unfair, beating on a game that's more than 30 years old. I'm sorry, but it sucks now, and it sucked ass back then as well. You know what other game released in 1991? Round one, fight! <laughs> Street Fighter 2. Look at that, yes, that's right. You could program good fighting controls way back in the 90s. Now, look at this shit. I can't get a single hit. Meanwhile, this piece of shit just keeps going. Every hit also stuns you, and before you have the chance to counterattack, you get hit again and again and again. I swear to God, when playing this in my childhood, I died at least 20 times to this piece of shit. It was blood, sweat and tears. It was screams of anguish and suffering. It was horror, but for all the wrong reasons. And when you finally beat it, this is your reward. Alone in the Dark doesn't fuck around. Having one enemy in the first room wasn't enough. They needed two. And you know what? It doesn't ever fucking stop. The attic. Bird through the window, followed by zombie through the floor. First room, zombie through the door. Second room, zombie through the door, again. Third room, another bird through the window, again. Do you see the pattern here? And that's just the first 10 minutes of the game. And in case they can't use a door or a window, they just used shitty camera angles. Yes, that's right. The camera sucks too. Now let's talk about puzzles. How do you think they're designed? Let's have a quiz. A. The puzzles can be solved using the player's own logic and common sense. B. The puzzles can be solved collecting information in the world, such as reading books or diary entries. C. The puzzles are based on classical horror lore about demons, vampires, werewolves, and so on. 
D. The puzzles suck monkey balls and have no coherent logic or structure. If you picked anything other than D, I'm sorry to say, but you suck monkey balls too. The first real puzzle is on the top floor, where these two bitches block the stairs. Your first thought might be to shoot them or punch them, after all, that's how every problem has been solved so far. But no, for some reason you're supposed to put mirrors in front of both of them and they just die. Why? Maybe they realize they're only three pixels? Who the fuck cares? You're now one step closer to finish this awful excuse of a game. Shortly after, you need to kill this thing because you will need his weapon later on. Now, the way you kill him is just plain stupid. He simply dies when you throw a statue at him. Now, why would this kill him? Is he fucking allergic to statues? Your guess is as good as mine. If you know better, please say so in the comments below. But there is one puzzle that takes the fucking price. Now, buckle up, because this is stupid off the charts. In the library, there is a monster which you cannot kill. In fact, he is so unkillable, not even statues can hurt him. First off, you need to put a fake book in this empty slot, which opens up a hidden chamber. Yes, this slot over here. How the fuck are you supposed to know? The entire library looks the same. Then you need to pick up a demonic book, equip a curb dagger, read from the demonic book, Nomine Invocatoris, and the dagger can now somehow kill the monster. But be fucking careful, because if you stand anywhere outside of this pentagram, this is what happens. Who the fuck designed this piece of shit? Give me one reason, one loud reason how that adds any type of fun or challenge to the game. The puzzle wasn't stupid enough, you had to die if you read a fucking book? And speaking of sheep deaths, oh, there is more, much much more. I have one big shit sandwich coming up. No bad game is complete without sheep deaths, and Alone in the Dark has plenty of them. Let me give you some examples. In this hallway you will pass a painting, which in itself is nothing strange for an old mansion. The game designers however, wishing no player should ever enjoy this game, decided to make the painting a death trap. Look at this shit! These are not axes, these are fucking stingray missiles! Once the first axe comes flying, oh, sorry, not axe, stingray missile. Once the first stingray missile comes flying, you are dead. What a fucking joke. To pass the painting, you will need a blanket. The blanket is, of course, back on the very first floor. And there's no reason I should not take the shortest way back. Everyone who disliked this video, please turn off the video now. That's so fucked up! Not only is that death cheaper than your average OnlyFans model, there is also no indication that the floor is weak. You even had the main character fucking walk over the floor in the fucking intro sequence. Yes, that's right. You could just walk over it. You could just walk over it. Fuck this game. The ultimate nail in the coffin, the final insult, the winner of shitty awards is the save system. Now you better sit down for this one. You only have one save. One sad, lonely save. There is no excuse. 
there is no fucking excuse for having such a limited save system. In an alternate universe, I maybe, just maybe, could have forgiven the shitty combat and bad puzzles by the limitations of the time. But only one save? Some asshole actually programmed the game to have only one save. What you want to do is save often, because you could die at any moment from books, paintings, floors or doors. Yes, doors kill you too. But there's a problem with that. A big, fat, ugly problem. Which brings us to the next issue. Seemingly mundane actions make the game impossible to beat. Using the first melee weapon as an actual weapon? Sorry, now it breaks and you cannot enter the final area of the game. Wasting all your arrows? Sorry, now you cannot kill the second killer painting. Yes, they do have a second killer painting. So, which poison do you choose? Do you replay the game because you died from random stupid shit? Or do you replay the game because you did some arbitrary forbidden action? The game never tells you when you performed a forbidden action, so you might be stuck for hours, even days, wandering the hallways of this garbage game, finding yet more stupid ways to die. Now, in the essence of time and my own sanity, it's almost time to wrap up. Let's quickly go over some honorable mentions of stupidity. Unkillable enemies. Yes, there are unkillable enemies in the game, which the game clearly marks as unkillable. That was a joke. Some enemies are just unkillable and there is, once again, no way of knowing that. The story sucks too, or rather, there is no story, it's just you aimlessly wandering around the house. I guess you can find some kind of story if you have the patience to read books. But remember, this is how the game treats curious players. The only redeeming factor in this game is the ending. Don't get me wrong, the ending sucks too. But at least, you don't have to play Alone in the Dark ever again. So, with those words, I bid you farewell. <laughs> there are sequels? <laughs> ah!